Today we're going to do a quick rundown of what these tools are used for. Uh, the Retouching Academy's um, panel is actually a shortcut panel. Just like the actions I've created over here, they're shortcuts. So most of these options that you're seeing here are actually built in Photoshop. For example, the Liquify tool, if you come to Filter and come down to Liquify, you'll have the option here to select Liquify. All right, so today we're going to be, you know, going down the list. Most of these tools, I've never used them before. I don't really know what they're for, but let's see if I can figure it out today. If I cannot figure it out, I just can't figure it out. All right, let's get right to the video. So the first button on the panel is Liquify, and we all know what Liquify is used for, right? So when you hit um, the Liquify option, it pulls up this liquify page and you can make adjustment to your models face nose eyes lips ears you know anything that you'd like to make adjustment to so I'm just going over what the tools actually display and that's basically it for sharpen um, you should know what that is as well but if you do not know what sharpen is I just click on the sharpen option let me just zoom in on the image itself and see it sharpens the image see that good all right so the next option now is under dodge and burn ah uh, I've never really used the dodge and burn curve setup before but let's click on it and see what it does okay um, hmm I think this is used for uh, for example, when you're dodging and burning, if you dodge and burn in black and white, you should be able to see the sections that you should dodge and you should burn. I believe it's something like that. So the first thing you'll do is to pull up the dodge and burn. Um, well, once you hit the um, dodge and burn curve setup, you'll come down to the dodge and burn option here. Let me get my brush. Um, I'm going to put the brush at 1%. Uh, because that's what I always use. My foreground is white, and I'm working on the light area, which is the dodge, which is the highlighted area. Let's see if it works. It does. So I, I, I think I was watching a video once where it says, you know, when you're in black and white, you will be able to see what you're doing much better. So, but I don't use it. Don't really see the need to. Let's see before and after and then when you're finished you delete this here and you'll see what you've done uh, maybe I should start using this <laughs> all right good all right so let's move on to the other one um, this is basically a brush um, yeah this is just a brush this brush right here so the shortcut for the brush so you do not have to come over here to cut the brush this is the regular dodge and burn option that will be that that we've used. This, oh cool. So I guess this is this. Um, what happened is that this dodge and burn action gives you the visual aid option as well, which is the black and white um, thing. So if you do not want to use the entire thing, uh, you could just use this one. I hope I'm explaining this properly instead of using everything that has the dodge and burn um, layers with the black and white with the visual aid um, layer all right um, this one now dodge and burn mid gray layer setup I have never used this one before not even sure what it's used for um, but let's hmm, let's try something it's the same dodge and burn but it's I think it's you know what let's let's try let's try so I'm on the um I'm gonna go down to the burn and I'm gonna work on the dark area see what happens basically it's the same thing but I think it's it says mid so I guess it's between I think it's at 50% um, yeah so that's basically it it doesn't really do much it's like 50 percent 
of the dodge and burn that you were using before previously all right so this is the frequency separation um actions 8-bit is when you're working on an 8-bit image um for example well, if you shoot in jpeg it's normally 8-bit and if you shoot in raw it's normally 12-bit so you can well, not 12-bit 16-bit so you can um change it by going to image mode and you can change it here but it's always best to shoot in raw so you you have more information in raw and you can edit in 16-bit which is better for your image all right um the uh custom i believe you can put it to whatever radius you want it this is basically you putting that the radius for the um high pass filter I don't think I can explain this properly, but this one here is basically when you're creating the dodge and burn um, action. So I guess this gives you the option to put it at whatever radius you want to put it at when you're creating the action itself. And I have a video um, that teach that actually teaches how to create um, an action for the frequency separation. So I can link that video up in the cards right here so you can see it all right and it will give you a better understanding of what um the custom high pass filter section right here is for okay i'm so bad at explaining this thing but i hope you guys understand where i'm coming from <laughs> all right so for the digital skin texture i've used this before sometimes when you're making um if you're making edits to the image like you're doing frequency separation and you're using um, if you're blurring out the image, you can get back the texture uh, in the image by using this option here. So you get your brush. I'm going to put my brush at about 100% um, so you can see what, what it does. So it gives texture. See? Before and after. So that's basically what this, do, this does. It gives you texture in your image. Alright? So I'm going to come down to luminosity masking. I maybe have to Google Google this word because I don't really know what this does. But let me click on basic and see what happens. Hmm. Oh. Oh, it make a selection actually. Um, okay. Um, not sure why it made a selection, but I guess it, m it makes a selection of the white areas, I guess. Let's see yeah the highlighted areas it makes a selection for the highlighted areas what is this plus four i'm not sure invert not sure what the invert is for either <laughs> all right okay um control d to deselect the marching the marching ants i'm not sure what is what this is used for you can maybe youtube that <laughs> all right so for the beauty face and makeup hmm magical tone magical skin tone i wonder what this done let me get my brush get this brush right here and change my foreground to white by hitting x on the keyboard all right so what i'm going to do now is to paint on the skin at 100 percent to see what happens oh okay i see what happens so you can add color to the skin using this option so, for example, if a section of your model skin is not reflecting, is not matching the other side, you can add color to it. This looks good. Add like a warm color to her skin. I like this. Yeah, it looks warm. That's cool. And we can tone it down a little bit if we wish to about right there. Okay, so that adds tone to the skin, basically. All right, so it's straightforward. And if you, uh, you know, th for these options, I think it's a lot of different uh, um, adjustments you have to do to, to get to it. So the panel is really good because it gives you the shortcuts. You do not have to go through all these different options to create it. So that's good. And I believe if you want to change the color of the um, the um tone you can do that by clicking on that go back to 
Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. I see. All right. So the other option is glowing skin. Let's see you what it does. Um, not seeing anything. But it should. Um, let me see. Before and after. Okay, it puts a glow in the skin if you can see before. Uh, but before and after. Before and after. Okay. Let's see what's happening down here. Um, okay, it puts a glow in the skin. That's that option. I would. I don't think I would use. All right. Let's move on to the other option now. What's happening here? Okay. Um, anti pink. What's this? Oh, it gives it a pink tone. Okay, that's straightforward. All right, let's move on to the other option, which is magic eyes. Magic eyes. I think what what it does is to whiten the eye a little bit. I don't really like it because it kind of blurs the, the the eye a little bit, I believe. Um, let's try it. So the first option, let me pull this out a little bit. So the first option here that says change color of the eye or, or the makeup. Um, okay, so this is blue. So how do I change the color? of this blue how do I change blue let me see let me double click on this okay I guess I have to change it here so let me go back here get my brush green okay so if you want to change the color of the eyes or this the makeup you can use this option here all right so I'm gonna go down to the other option here um, that says clean eye whites here okay let me zoom it up a little bit and see what happened. I think this is the one I don't like. It kind of blurs the eye. Let me see. So I'm going to go down to, well, right here. I'm going to get the brush. Change my foreground color using X to white because I'm painting on black. And I'm going to get this smaller and going to paint the white area. Oh, this looks good. But you don't want to do this at 100%. Um... So I'm going to lower the opacity so it looks natural a bit. Some of my images, when I when I usually use this option, some of my images, it looks blurry when I whiten the eye. Not sure why, but this image, it works perfect on this image. Let's look at the before and after. Before, after. Looks good. So it get rid of the red in the eye. But you just want to leave back some of the reds because you want it to look natural. All right. So, yeah, that's it for that. Let me just delete this. Um, magic smile. This is for the teeth. Uh, we don't really have any teeth to work with. So, this is basically whitening the teeth. So, as you can see, that's what it does. But I use this option to whiten the eyes as well because it works well as well for the eyes. And you can just lower the opacity for that. See? And it whitened the teeth. All right, good. So that's that. Let me go on to the other option. It says remove body and facial hair. Okay. I really don't know what to do right here, but I'm just going to click OK. And click OK. This looks like frequency separation as well. Well, it is frequency separation, but... I don't know what to do, but let's see. If you're going to be removing something, normally you'd use the patch tool or you'd use the clone stamp tool, right? All right, let's try something. Because as I said, I never used this before. I'm going to get my um, patch tool and I'm going to try to remove the hair right here. All right. So I'm going to sample right here and then I'm going to come. Okay, nothing is happening. All right, let me change my foreground to white. And okay, so nothing is happening right here. Hmm. Um. All right, let me get the patch tool and see if it works. 
Okay, nothing happens. Um, let me get the healing. Uh, where is it? The healing brush, and see if it worked as well. Let me get the spot healing brush. All right, so I don't know what this option actually. Oh wait. Okay, let me let me try something now. I'm gonna go back to the um, stamp tool, and I'm gonna sample and paint. All right, so I do not know what this option actually, you know, does. So let me just let me just move on to something else. All right, this says beauty here. So um, here highlights. Uh, so I believe it highlights the hair. This is a brush right here. So I'm going to click this brush one and see what this actually does. Oh, nice. I can put a highlight in the hair of the models. Of the models here. Okay, that looks good. And you can lower the opacity if you want to. So let me let me do let, let me do this more realistic. All right. So I'm going to click on that. So for example, if you, you see um, highlighted areas like right here, we could just touch it like that, like that, like that, like that. So you work on the highlighted areas. It gives a, a pop, you know, it, it pops. So see what it does? So before and after. See that? I'm not sure what brush tool is all about, but let's see. Brush tool. Let me zoom up a little bit more. Um... Okay, I don't know what brush tool <laughs> does, but that's it. All right, I'm going to move on to something else. Um, solar curve. It's under... Um, uh, okay, I don't know what this... Let me delete this. Oh, I think this is used for... If you want to blend the skin, I believe you'll see what sections of the skin is not even or something like that. I think I saw a video on this before. Um, so I think you can maybe get the um, uh, the patch tool, I believe. Um, let me try something. And then if, if the section is not even, you'll just... Um, okay, I, I'm not sure. All right, I'm just going to leave that alone because <laughs> I'm not sure what that does, but okay. All right, the other option here is the um, over saturation. And okay, so it adds that little effect. Um, we can delete this as well. Okay, all right. So I guess we can change the color with this. I don't know what that's all about, but I wouldn't use that option. I'd have no need to use that option. All right, let me come down here under user action. So A. Um, don't see uh, anything happening all right b c d e f i have no idea what these options are used for um okay so we're gonna move on this is the levels um option um this is the curve this is the um hue saturation this is the selective color i didn't even notice that these options were here um, this is, I think, it's duplicate. All right, this is creating a, a new layer. This is save for web. Um, so you can put the size you want it to be. I could say um, 1080 for Instagram. Yeah. And then you can just save your image. Um, this is save at 120%. Um, not not save at 120%, but you're going to size it at 120%. This is save as. So instead of you doing control S, you can do save as, which control S is faster. Or you can come up here and go save as. And basically, that's it for the, the different um, buttons. All right. I hope this video helps. You know, um, I didn't do a good job, actually, in explaining what these tools are used for. But... I hope it actually helps. Thanks for watching, guys. And remember to watch my previous video. And stay tuned for more videos.